James, I don't like your freaking attitude today. <laughs> Let's get here at DFW Airport. Beautiful day, we're headed to Wisconsin. Been working on this deal for a long time, but the weather has really pushed it back several times. And it looks like the weather's still pretty bad up there, so we'll see what happens. We've got two rigs heading up. We're buying a collection of six vehicles from a Jeep enthusiast who's been into Jeep CJs for a long time in a very rare Dodge truck. The highlights for the CJs are H codes, which are V8 CJs. Very special packages, you'll see those when we get there. One Jeep Scrammer, which you know my favorite CJ's ever built, and an extremely rare Dodge truck, and yes, it's four-wheel drive, yes, it's low miles, yes, it's a special color, and a bunch of special options. So you Jeep guys, truck guys, four-wheel drive guys, grab your cup of joe and everybody else, let's go. What's up, Zach? What up? So, so these two road warriors just drove 1,800 miles, right? Yeah. So behind the scenes, these guys work incredibly hard. I don't thank you guys enough, but you guys kill it. They're going to run almost 4,000 miles this week. Can we talk about that it was 90 degrees yesterday and it's like 20 right now? Mm -hmm. I think it's 21, but you know. Okay. I'm it's off. okay. The sun's up. But the reason we're standing here is because Sean likes to mill around and meet all the local people. And they say that the holiday over there has got some amazing coffee. But we're in River Falls, we're rescuing five Jeeps and a super rare truck, which both of these guys are into Jeeps. They both drive Jeeps and they're both into trucks. Yep. So it's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be some holiday coffee. I'd like to point out how well our window's doing that Rich Rinky from Copo installed. Thank you for that. That is a very professional operation you got there at Turnkey Rich. He's smiling. You push the button, tell it what you want. Great rain, rainforest. Tell it your Go, forest. Is that a large, forest. medium, or semi size? That's large. So, Sean, that was a really cool coffee maker, yeah. and neither of you guys got coffee. Nope, I got the. Uh, Way to sell it. A banger. <laughs> Let's go get these Jeeps in that truck. This area, River Falls, Minnesota, is absolutely stunning. The drive up was great. Huge farms, barns, things like that. But it's really neat to walk in a shop like this, which I just walked in real quick. Incredibly organized, incredibly cool stuff. You guys are gonna love this. Let's go. First one we're looking at today is a 1975 Dodge D100 Power Wagon. Short bed, four wheel drive, power steering, power brakes, automatic, AC, yellow with white. Everybody out there knows I've been doing this my whole life, over 40 years. I've actually never seen one. Let's check it out. So when I got the call on these Jeeps, I asked what else they had. They said he had a really rare truck. And oddly enough, this truck came out of Texas, out of Houston. 51,000 miles. Wow, this is so cool. Crazy rare truck. Yep. Power steering, power brakes, AC. That overflow tank is crazy. Look at that. Hadn't been hit in the front. Very cool. Next off, we'll go to the SLR. Scrammer, which is a Scrammer Laredo. Nice to be original paint. Good fit wheels and tires. What I like is he's got an original set of seats here. Not make seats. Look at that. That's a good sign. 82 power steering. Hood light works. This one I was excited to see. Uh, 
first year, in my opinion, the, the good CJs, which is 1976, which they made all the huge upgrades in 76. Uh, factory 8274 Warren Winch, which is a great, super rare option. It is a date code 1976 as well. So this Jeep, this winch has probably been on this Jeep since new. H code V8, which you gotta love, and power steering. A lot of times when we find these early CJ5s that don't have a lot of miles on them, they generally don't have power steering and they were a bear to drive. You can see right here, factory 304, 1976. Love the patina, original paint renegade. 74,000 miles, T150 Jeep. You can always tell when you walk up to 76 or 77 in the back, uh, I pointed out in the past, the fuel fill. There's not a square here, it's a round. And this is a factory early style type draw bar, which was 76, 77 only. The later ones were the U-shape, which is probably on one of these Jeeps. Now, next we've got a 78 CJ5 Golden Eagle. You see the Levi's seats, tack clock. Uh, it's already been painted, but you need to put the front end back on it, stripe it, detail the motor, and finish this up. Anytime you get an H code V8 CJ5, Golden Eagle, it's great find. Uh, right wheels are not on it, but I believe the correct wheels are here. Original paint CJ5 Golden Eagle. Again, it's an H code V8. Great patina on the hood. This is a 77. You can tell when you walk up, you just got the inset on the cow. 1977. So this, so this would be a really neat match to go with the 77 limited edition CE Golden Eagle that we have. Build decals here, tag clock, Levi's dash. Looks like a really correct Jeep. 53,000 miles, original seats. Uh, driver seat is very dumb, but it's nice to see the original stuff. Here's out of this entire collection, other than the truck, this is probably the one I'm most excited about. 1980, this is the last year of the Golden Eagle. They changed the seats, so the seats were gonna be the same as a Laredo. It was also the first year of Dana 300, the T176, the final year of the Golden Eagle. And what's great about this Jeep is it's P1 black, which is classic black, which Jeep did not like to do. Most of these were special ordered by customers because Jeep did not like to paint them black. It's too much prep time, so. H code V8, 1980, power steering, power brakes. And here's what you want to see. This is a big deal on this Jeep. P1 for black. And then your 7PK is your Golden Eagle. So, this is a Holy Grail Golden Eagle impossible to find. You've also got your one year only horn button. There's a lot of one year only items on this Jeep. Looks like a really good cross between original and it's had some upkeep over, over its life. 52,000 miles. Wow. So to recap, incredibly rare D100 1975, 82 Laredo Scrambler, 76 CJ5 with original paint with an 8274 and a V8. These are in, in three H code V8 CJ5 Golden Eagles. Wow, what a great day. And as we look around the shop, the guy's got some incredibly cool stuff. But we also bought a lot of parts with this. Now, most of these are to finish that 78 Golden Eagle in the corner. But upstairs, there's 14 or 15 seats, most of which are Levi's, which we always need. I believe there's a set of Laredo seats up there. Lots of wheels, tires, and miscellaneous parts that we'll use in restoration. Um, wow. Looks like we got our day cut out for us, or at least Sean and James do. I want to show you guys one more thing that's really cool over here. We didn't get that. I guess I'm going to have to work on them. Yes, that's a real Warlock. Very cool. <laughs> Check this out. Mopar no car. It's what every Mopar Jeep guy needs. So the owner of all this incredible stuff was able to buy this from a dealership. I don't think we can talk about that, but we'll try. So let's get James and Sean to get after it. Somebody do something. I've never seen you guys move this slow. Break. All right, y'all do something. Hmm. We've literally done nothing. No, we've done a lot. 
Well, somebody, somebody decided, <laughs> we've been here for almost 45 minutes and we've done nothing. Somebody decided to start it all. But I didn't buy them all. I do have the titles. And I got my gloves. Huh. That's progress. <laughs> do something, James. Anything. Somebody do something. I'm waiting for this oh, thing. We're to literally just do standing here doing nothing. Well, Sean's giving me the business for putting gloves on, but this is something that's really neat. These wheels. I don't remember what year they came out in, but I, I know that you can get these even on the pre-70 J5s. I know they had them in 75, but these are the original Pinto Bean alloy wheels for this Jeep. That's wicked cool. So we'll get these back on, and oh, look at that. Golden Eagle's got the original Goodyear Tracker ATs on it. Stud. Depending on the miles on that Jeep, those tires might go on this and might go on that. Flip-flop? Flip-flop. But anyways, original alloys for early uh, 76, 77. Rainy Day would have had these on there. Right. And all five are there. All five. And one goes on the back. Spur. Spur. So the shift knob is incorrect in this Jeep, which is no big deal, but it's a one year only shift knob for 1980, super cool. Original Goodyear Tracker AT tires on it. Really good patina, original paint Golden Eagle, and obviously a V8, you can hear it. What a great find. Really cool when you see an original paint 76 or 77 the jeep lettering right here was burnished which is a style it's painted on there it's not a decal original levi's decal so this is a factory orange renegade alloy wheels with levi's interior <clears throat> great option the Very close to being rust free, 100% original paint, power steering, V8, 76 CJ5, Renegade with Levi's tan interior. Great Jeep. Hi, right, tell me your plan, Sean. I don't know how solid it is, but go ahead. So the plan is we're going to pull this truck forward about this much. Okay. And James is going to get up there and he's going to hand me the seats and I'm going to strap them down inside the bed of that truck. Okay. Now, this is an incredible stash that we bought here. I would have bought it anyway, but I was really excited about. There's 15 OE seats up there. Most of them are Levi's and there's a set of Laredo seats. Finding OE nice original Jeep CJ seats is tough. If you guys have an OE set of CJ seats laying in your garage or your barn or in your house, send us a lead at social at cvjeep.com. Or, or you need a set. No, I'm not selling them. We need seats. <laughs> You're not All right, let's, let's see your plan. Okay. This thing running, right? Yep. Battery hook up. Yep. James, how is it up there? It's warm. Okay. Pop it in and move forward this much. Okay. How cool is that? This just bleeds 70s cool. It's 
Okay. These fold down now? That's a Levi's. It is actual Levi's seat because it says on the button. So this is a 76 to 78 wow. seat. That's an aftermarket seat. Aftermarket seat, but it's got a flip forward seat bracket, which is nice. Stationary aftermarket seat. 1980 Laredo seat. Big in dash pad in that it doesn't have the cutout here for the for the vent window. So that would go on a Jeep that was a non hardtop Jeep or an 81 and older. Another 1980 Laredo seat or a Golden Eagle or a Golden Hawk. Low back. It's a Levi. Levi's. It's a great seat. Okay, and it doesn't say Levi's, so that's a 1979 seat. Another 79 seat. Laredo Bob. seat covers. Good stuff. Hold Gotta down. love it when you see blue Levi's. I don't know what it is. 1979 Levi's 10. One year only seat. Dennis, will you take this away? You want me to do something, Sean? Yeah. Okay. Steel dash panel. Look at that. And you're looking at 81 and up because you've got the speaker grill here. So this will work for 81 to 86. And what's fantastic is the radio hole has not been cut. So the majority of the Jeeps, when we part them out, either the radio hole's been cut, speaker hole's been cut. This is an uncut dash. It'd be great for restoration. But how cool is this? So that is a 79 only blue low back. That is super that's cool. great. Oh, now wow. we've got a fold and tumble Laredo seat. You know, obviously it goes in the back of a CJ7. Uh, it'll flip forward. Really so rare seats in here. Push that, this after you want me to do something, Sean? Pull it that way. Okay. We will use that's every one of these cool. seats in our restoration shop. Nice. All so these will be used. Me... It's a load on the load. Yes. It's got a factory tack in it. I don't think I've ever seen one before. 51,000 mile truck. Full gauges with a factory tack. Yeah. And it's a Texas truck. In Minnesota. Many 1975 short bed four wheel drive 50,000 mile highly optioned unrestored Dodge D100s exist. Well, I'm gonna go with one so far. <laughs> I've never seen one. I've never seen one either. So if you guys have one, send us a lead to social at cbjeep.com, but I've never seen one. All wheel drive all the time. Cool truck. All right, let's go get the scrambler. Again, this is a Laredo scrammer, so very highly optioned. Got your leather wrapped steering wheel, leather wrapped grab bar, tack, clock, stripe package, rocker moldings, rear bumper, chrome front bumper, chrome grill overlay. This was the most expensive Jeep you could buy in 1982, a Laredo scrammer. They were as expensive as a Cadillac or a Corvette. That was a lot of money back then. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. I'm gonna go with that, uh, I'm gonna say a 76, and Dennis will be like, no, it's a 77. There's that. Right, Dennis? Sir? What did this come out of? This? Yeah. That's a stationary Laredo seat. What year? 81. Totally off. Levi's 10. 76 to 80. It's a later model one, because the earlier ones had a different fabric here, so that's probably a, a 1978 seat.
So these are pre-1976 seats. I'm not an expert on pre-76 stuff, but I believe that pattern is for a Tuxedo Park. Tuxedo Park was a Highline Jeep, if you will, in pre-76 stuff. I was about to sit on that one. Nineteen eighty-two Scrambler looks to be rust-free. Bed's in exceptional shape. T4 power steering, power brakes, tilt. I believe that color's orange mist copper. I didn't look at the color code, but nutmeg and tear seems to run and drive well. With another one, cool find. Original rear bumpers on it. Four, five, six seats in the back. There you go. And we still got two more seats up there. So everything we bought here today is special, but this is the holy grail of the bunch. 1980 P1 Black, Golden Eagle, one year only interior, first year for the T176 transmission, the four speed, first year for the Dana 300. Very few of these were built. Uh, nobody knows the exact number, but it's really, really low production. And we're gonna put this hard top of doors on it and get it loaded. That's an aftermarket top of doors, but that's okay. So we've got four Renegade style steering, steering wheels. These are called Sure Grips. Great parts to have for the restoration shop. A nice horn buttons. The center medallion is not cracked, which they commonly are. Gauge cluster. Great stuff for the restoration shop. All right, let's put this aftermarket hardtop on. How about we watch Sean and James put the aftermarket hardtop on? There's, see, there's no place to grab. Hold on, hold on. Come on. God, this thing's heavy. These guys yeah. look like a monkey with a football. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why I hate hard times. Now we're cooking with olive oil or grease or something. I don't know what. It's Crisco, isn't it? Didn't fit very well. Well, it'll go on there. There you go. If anybody out there wants a custom CJ5 setup, that will be for sale as well. Or we can just drop it off at Sean's house. <laughs> My garage is full, man. Yes, it is. Of really cool stuff. In your opinion. Mm, oh, hey, man. I have taste. It might not be good taste, but I have taste. You know what's crazy? The striker plates are actually built into the hard top. <laughs> oh, wow. You ever seen that? No. Pretty cool. Huh. It's in pretty good shape. Somebody's gonna want a hard top for a CJ5. Look at that. Is that it? That's it. Since it's going into the enclosed trail, it'll be fine. Okay. It's got a bunch of latches inside, but it's not gonna shift. Nah. Okay. Here, hold that for a second. He does ball for anything, does No, sir. Dennis does what Dennis wants. Do not put that in the trailer. trailer. Run, Forrest, run! Boom. That is so cool. It is an honor and a pleasure to even sit in a black 1980 CJ5 Golden Eagle. Very cool. P1 Black. Now let's go push out the one that's not finished. Sean, are your pants long enough? <laughs> you make one more comment about my clothes. I'm gonna 
take them. Where do you get your pants? <laughs> Goodwill. <laughs> you have the most ill-fitting jeans of anybody on the planet. But look how worn they are. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta roll them up just to wear them. Hey, one day I'm gonna grow. <laughs> Here you go. Is that your hope? My dream? Let's go some dream really slow. Real slow. Not that slow. Why do I feel as if I'm all in one fold on this thing? Because you are. <laughs> Make the old guy do all the work. Terrible. No, the old guy's up there steering. Oh, yeah, the old guy's steering. <laughs> like it drove itself. And this is a Levi edition too. Yes, sir, it is. 1978 Golden Eagle. V8H code. This is a Golden Eagle too. Yep. Sweet. Three Golden Eagles in one day. Not bad. All this needs is about 100 hours of work. Pretty good to go. You know, I know a guy. I know a shop that can do this too. Uh huh. The bumper's kind of cool. Dented. <laughs> it's tweaked a little bit. <laughs> God, it's custom. It kind of looks like James. Hey. Just a little bit off. Just a little that, bit that off. That actually looks better than James. <laughs> that's about true. I love that. But it's got good luck on it. Well, that's, least, that's in way better that. shape than James. Hey. <laughs> Well, that plan didn't game. work out very well. Golly, that's a tough crowd. Uh, I don't like that. I like that better. This is more my pace. So what are the chances of having three H code, which is a factory V8, CJ5, Golden Eagles in the trailer at the same time? Boom. What do you think about that, James? It's awesome. Hi, May. Hi, May. James. <laughs> How many names do y'all got for me now? A lot. You don't a want lot. to know the other ones. <laughs> I know, right. <laughs> so the owner is a super nice guy, obviously very switched on in the car world. Was gracious enough to let us film inside his shop. He just didn't want to be on camera, which is fine. Again, that's never a parameter. You don't have to be on camera when you sell us something. And he recommended a restaurant here in River Falls called West Wind Supper Club. Okay. There's a slight problem with that. Uh-oh. It's 3 o'clock and they don't open until 4. Well, we got an hour to burn. There I'm you starving. Go. Thank you, sir. Are you starving, Marvin? Thank you, sir. Starving, Marvin. So we're going to West Wind Supper Club in River Falls. This is why I wear gloves. And you guys rag me all the time. Yeah, but see, I have man hands. I have dishpan hands. <laughs> we read your menu when we walked in for the appetizer. And it looks impressive. Okay. So we want to do every one of them. Every one of them. Yes, sir. All right. One of each. And that would be the cream cheese wonton sticks, margarita shrimp cocktail, West Wind grilled quesadilla, portobello pie, deep fried pickles, pineapple pork nachos, which I've never heard of before, grilled chicken nachos, teriyaki beef asparagus wraps, never heard of that, Ellsworth cheese curds, one of Sean's favorites and a walleye fingers. Hmm, what's that? Walleye fingers, so they're just like uh, walleye strips, deep fried, and then with tartar sauce. But I don't know what a walleye is. Uh, is that fish? A, a, yes, a really good fish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll do one of these to start with. All right, sounds good. What do we got here? Margarita Stuff. shrimp, fried pickles, portobello pie, chicken That's nachos. a portobello pie with uh, steak bites on top. Woo! Portobello pie. Are those uh, cream nope. cheese wontons? No, nope, we still gotta bring those out. Those okay. Are gotcha. Those are fried pickles. Fried Sean. pickles. I've never seen a like a French fry. I washed my hands. You know, they were already clean, so I had gloves on. But look at them now. <laughs> yeah. Great job washing your hands, Sean. I've washed them ten times. Bro. <laughs> this is interesting. The portobello. Cheese curds. Cheese curds. Cheese curds. <laughs> Just wherever you can put a ma'am's pie. Sean's favorite, the cheese curds. Oh yeah, they look really great. Throw them here. Well, that's unusual looking. I like that. Got the chicken quesadillas. Okay. Ooh. Is that the one that has pineapple? No. Nope, those are the pineapple pork nachos which are coming okay. in. Okay. 
Definitely here we have the walleye fingers. Walleye fingers? It's a fish. Wow, that sounds awesome. The walleye is really good. I love it. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. now. Pineapple, you guys are Pineapple nachos right, right there, there. It'd be I'm perfect. Right be careful with the, the nacho plates. The top one is really hot. Okay. You guys are all set. Would you like anything else right now? Outstanding. No, we'll start munching on this and then we'll order the meal. Sounds good. All right, cool. Enjoy, guys. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Is that steak? It is a portobello mushroom. Oh. And then it's got steak on top. Huh. That's a must try. Man. All right. Definitely never had this, so that's cool that we're here. Asparagus teriyaki wraps. All right, Mike, we're doing good so far. Enjoy. Thank you. Wow, that's a tender steak right there. Wow. Is it good? <laughs> it's yeah. delicious. This is really by far outstanding. Hmm. All right, nacho. Well, this is worth the wait. It's mm -hmm. five and a half hours to load all that stuff. And Zach's going to show all that to you in five minutes. <laughs> so we're hungry. Steak with mushrooms is the So you finally tasted the cheese bite. curds. That's good. Wisconsin, you cannot. I like not. it. So far, it's outstanding. Curds. Wow. The rest is good coming Lord. out. Good Lord. Holy. You want me to take that for yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. If you would. Wow. Strong. Excuse me, Sean P. Hold on. Push me out of the way, sir. So when I saw this on the menu, meatloaf grilled. Oh. I saw this on the menu, I was like, oh, medium rare. I'll tell you what, this restaurant rocks. Now, don't shoot me out there. My mom always made her meat love a catch bar. I gotta have that. Well, isn't that the way you're supposed to do it? Jame, you in? Yes, I gotta get a little plate, though. I'll get you some of that, bro. I'm going to. I can't wait. That's one of my favorite things. Grilled meat love with risotto. Beautiful. A little piece of prime rib. That baby rare. Look at that. Medium rare, baby. <laughs> Looks rare to me. That's medium rare. That's all you want. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it's supposed to be. Oh, here's the knife. Sorry. That's all right. Cut itself almost. How's you eat? Beautiful. We have the bourbon caramel creme brulee. Okay. Trace leches layer cake. Ooh, I like that. And the key lime cheesecake. Dessert, you guys. I love that we're starting to add desserts to coffee walk. We never used to do that. <laughs> Holy moly, rock and roll. Hmm. I want to try that. We need clean forks. I don't even know how to get the bite. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Is that the way? Ooh, that is really good. Outstanding, Mike. Mike, 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 Mike. Really good. I've never heard of frozen lemon meringue, and that is so good. Is it good? So even the cake is no, frozen. We can't Try it, James. No. Try it. No. no. So even the cake is frozen. The cake itself is frozen solid. That is crazy. What a cool idea. Tiny mm. that. And then I Don't worry about that. I know we saw it. So, uh, if you're ever in River Falls and you don't come here, you're making a mistake. Huge. Outstanding. <laughs> now we're off to Minneapolis. Thanks to everyone that has registered so far, successfully registered so far for our auction, which the previews this Friday, the auction is actually this Saturday. If you have not gotten an email back from Proxy Bid that specifically says approved to bid, you are not fully registered. There's some steps left. You need to log back into Proxy Bid. So, and if you haven't registered yet, we recommend you do that before going to the site. You can do it on site, and you're welcome to do that, but. We prefer that you register online. Again, if you have not received an email, because it'll be from start to finish on about four emails, it actually says approved to bid and will have your bidder paddle number from proxy bid. Following that email, the last email you're going to get is from Vanderbrink for your receipt for the $50 for registering. So if those two things haven't happened and you log in on Saturday, you're not going to be able to bid. So again, thanks to everybody who has successfully registered thus far. 
There's hundreds of you that didn't make it through the entire process. It is a little bit tricky. Please go back and look at your emails and successfully complete your registration. Now, if you need help doing that, talking you through it because I'm not very good on computers and I couldn't get all the way through it, send us an email at social at cbjeep.com and we'll help you. Again, if you're registering for the auction, check and make sure that you have those last two emails that I just mentioned. Please like, tag, share, and follow, and most of all, subscribe to our YouTube channel.